Hey there! Is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. So welcome to church. Oh, it's been a, um, a crazy week in the realm of Christianity, of believing. I think there's a lot of people, unfortunately, that are very disappointed today. The rapture was going to take place today. Okay, so, so there's a lot of people that are disappointed. Okay, the people that thought the rapture was going to happen today and believed it was going to happen today, I'd love, I'd love to hear what they're going to say tomorrow. But if the rapture happened today, where are you? You see, Jesus is coming again. Okay, that's, that's, not a, that's not an if, that's not a but, that's not a maybe. Jesus is coming. When we look at the book of Revelation, it shows us what our church has become. And it, it is true that the church has become lukewarm. The church has become not the body of Christ, but the body that worships idols. There are so many so-called Christians that will put things in front of them that will justify the reason for their sin. I want to say to you today, and I want to confirm what Piet is saying, and as we go through our message, this word is true. There is nothing in this word that will be changed. What this word says is sin, is sin. There is no new understanding of the Greek and the Hebrew to be able to say what the Bible says is sin is no longer sin. Anything that you want to make an excuse for is sin. And the thing that you keep on making excuses for is the idol in your life that you are submitting to because that's important. You've got to make excuses for that. And you're putting that above God. We don't want to see that. We don't want to acknowledge those things. But I've got to ask you the question, what's the idols in your life? What is more important than your relationship with Jesus Christ? We've, we've had a few crazy days. And in particular, I've had a few really tough days. But I can tell you one thing. Renette and I spent, um, I sent a few messages. We were talking to Piet. We spent most of yesterday just worshipping God. And lot, last night, we actually made a point of it. We, we finished our supper and we just worshipped God. And it went on for a couple of hours just worshipping God. You see, you can make an excuse why you can't get somewhere, why you can't do something, why there isn't time, or you can just worship God. And I want to tell you, if you are not worshiping God today, I'm not talking about tomorrow or the next day or what happened yesterday, I'm talking about today. If God is not priority in your life, if Jesus is not your Lord and Savior. You see, many of us have Jesus as our Savior, but we don't want Him as our Lord. You see, because if He is our Lord, then we have to stop doing what we're doing and submit. We have to yield our behaviors to what Jesus requires of us. 
Last week I touched on a few scriptures specifically, and the week before, and it's about setting our heart because you and I must live a holy life without which we will not see the kingdom of heaven. And the other thing that I wanted to just touch on today again, I've preached on this last year already. Without faith, it is impossible to, believe, to please God. You see, faith is the beginning of everything that happens. And God has given all of us a measure of faith. Now what we do with it is up to us. We can either bury our faith, we can work with our faith that it multiplies, we can get into serving and praying and fasting that it even multiplies more, we can be part of people um, sharing Jesus that it multiplies even more. You see, everyone has been given a measure of faith. We talk about everyone being given talents. I want you to think about that just for the moment. I'm not getting into that today. That's not the message for today. But think about that. God has given us talents. God has given us a measure of faith. What are you doing with it? What are you doing with this that God has given you? You are the light. You are the light. Are you putting it under a basket? You are the salt. Are you the salt that has lost its saltiness and the only thing that they can do with that salt is throw it on a pathway so that it can absor uh, absor absorb the muck so that it can be something that you can walk on. Is that what we've become? Or are we truly a people that is walking in holiness? I shared with you last week the parable, and we spoke about the parable of the ten virgins. Now there's, there's two categories. You're either wise. What's the opposite of wise? Doff. Okay. So you're either wise or you doff. Stupid. Wisdom or stupidity. So a person that doesn't, and I like the word doff because doff means you're losing your shine. You know, when something doesn't have its shine, it's doff. When you're losing your shine, you doff. But you've lost your shine and you doff, so you doff because you, will, you haven't kept your shine. So it works both ways. Some people will not understand that. That's fine for those who do. Doff is to lose your shine. We are shining for Jesus. You and I must reflect Jesus. The more we shine, the more we reflect Jesus. When we lose our shine, that is called doff. When that surface becomes doff, it cannot reflect Jesus anymore. So, don't be doff, be lacquer. Praise the Lord. Don't be doff, be holy. God has called us to walk in holiness. What excuse are we making about this? There are, at the moment, there is so much. Everybody's jumping on this bad wa bandwagon of the rapture. And it, it is amazing to hear. And there were two sermons that I had listened to in this past week that I felt was just so sensible. And one of them, and a very well-known pastor, he turned around and he said, if I know Jesus is coming tomorrow, will my behavior change today? I'm going to ask you that question again. If I know Jesus is coming tomorrow, Will my behavior change today? And if the answer is yes, then you really need to check your heart. Because you must live your life as if Jesus is coming now. 
every moment of your life, you must live it as if Jesus is coming now. So then you will not be embarrassed or ashamed when somebody says, well, we said Jesus was coming. Okay, so some people did say the 23rd. That, that's two days ago. Okay, I haven't heard those people again. So 23rd was real. Jesus is coming. You're going to be left behind. Okay, so Jesus is coming today or tomorrow, but definitely the next day. The 27th, if we still yell on the 27th, then you know. You know. No, I don't know. Because Jesus himself said, we don't know. So, when I look at these things, the only thing that I can do is focus on God's word. Last week, the week before, I said to you, how do you and I live a life of holiness? How do we do it? This is such a crazy way to live. I've shared with you that you cannot live it on your own. The only way that we can live a life of holiness is in relationship with God and being empowered by the Holy Spirit so that we can live it. That is the only way that we can live a life of holiness. And the other thing to do is to go through God's word and to look at his promises. One of the Psalms, and it's a well-known Psalm, one of the Psalms, Psalm 23, is a Psalm that is very impactful in my life. Something happened, and Psalm 23 was something that was real to me, and it became very much, it became part of my testimony. God is, Jesus is my shepherd. Okay. Jesus is my shepherd. Okay. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Jesus is my shepherd. Is he your shepherd? You see, if Jesus is my shepherd, the one thing I've got to immediately recognize, Jesus is the shepherd, he leads me. Does Jesus lead you? Does Jesus protect you? If you look at your life, are you led and protected even in spite of everything being crazy? When everything is going wrong, He protects me. He leads me. See, one of the most challenging things for every person that lives a life as a child of God, the challenging thing is to let go of my past. It is so difficult for us to say, I'm saved, I'm set free. I am set free. You see, if I'm living a holy life, but I keep focusing on my past, the Bible teaches us that anyone, now you've got to understand, anyone that puts their hand to the plow, if you're plowing, you've got to look forward and you've got to see where your horses are going and there is somebody who is your marker, they are calling you to a point. So you, you are going on this direction. I'm pushing the plow. The horses are... Now I start looking back. Where's my plow going? You see, if I keep on, God has given me something that is a means to work in His kingdom. I put my hands on the thing that God is calling me to do. Now, I'm not sure what God is calling me to do. Well, put your hands on the plow. Because every one of us must plow so that seed can be sown so that we can see a harvest. But if I'm not looking at that, the work that I'm doing, if I'm not looking at it and I'm seeing it because God is calling me for this and I keep looking back, at my past and the thing. You see, the biggest challenge to holiness is our past. The biggest challenge to holiness is unforgiveness. You are forgiven. 
Yeah, I, I am. But yo, look at this. The first aspect is I look at my own life and I think about the stuff I've done. And I really do not embrace the, whole, the, the, the forgiveness God has given me. I thank the Lord that I'm forgiven. Yes, I am a child of God and Jesus is my Savior, but I keep on looking back. As a dog returns to its vomit, I keep on looking back at my past and it stops me advancing. It stops me going where I need to be. Another thing that keeps me stuck in a place of not being who I should be is when I don't forgive other people. You and I have all been hurt somewhere along the line. Every single one of us have been disappointed somewhere along the line. And when I get to this place, this is where the challenge in all the people that I speak to and share with, this is where our biggest challenge is. So what do I do? How do I overcome these things? The Bible teaches us that what God did when he took the Israelites into the promised land, he said to them, I'm going to help you. I'm going to chase these people out little by little. Because if I chase them all out, other stuff's going to come back and take its place. So I'm going to do it little by little. Now if you and I recognize that God showed us that in Scripture, then maybe in my life, whatever I'm doing, I need to do it step for step. I need to handle whatever's going on in my life step by step. How do I do this? I really want to share this with you, and this is something that I've shared with you on an ongoing basis. Uh, Hebrews 12 verse 2. There is no other way for you and I to move forward. It is impossible for us to let go and let God if we do not do this. Hebrews 12 verse 2 says this, Looking unto Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down, at, has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of of our faith. So, all of us have got something in front of us right now. I want you to think of that thing that is plying you. What is that thing that is plying you right now? In front of you. There's a thing. It's plying you. That thing is plying you so much that your focus is there, you're looking there, you're seeing it, you're busy with it. Nah. What's that thing that's in front of you? Now I want to say to you, do we believe God's scripture? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. All of these promises stop in their tracks as well if you and I don't have the faith to believe it. You see, you and I have to, step by step, not only deal with what's in front of us, but as we deal with what's in front of us, step by step, we need to grow our faith. We need to ask God to give us more faith. We need to exercise. We need to go to the gym of relationship with God so that our faith will grow. I want us to recognize that we must call on God. We must call on the Holy Spirit to help us wake up our faith. Not so. Yes, you guys are full of it today, eh? You're full of faith and hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Is it because I'm sitting? 
Well, I've had a bit of a challenge, so I'm, I'm, I'm sitting. You want me to stand up and do all these things? Okay, we're going to stand up and do this. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17 and 18. I need to deal with life little by little. I need to deal with the challenges that I'm facing, not looking at everything. I want to deal with it as it is in front of me. I need to understand that I need faith because faith is what's going to help me to forgive and to receive forgiveness. Faith is where I need to be. Lord, wake up my faith. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 17. For our present troubles. Is that, is that anybody here? Have you got present troubles? For our present troubles are small. What? You don't know how big my troubles are. No. The Lord is saying that your present troubles are small and they won't last long. Ah, <laughs> Lord, what do you mean they won't last long? Well, when you compare time to the, the, a day, it's only going to last for a day. Your trouble will last for a day because a day is like a thousand years to the Lord and a thousand years are like a day. <laughs> no, we don't want that to happen. So what do you do? His mercies are new every morning. It won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them, and that glory will last for ever. Verse 18. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on the things that we cannot see. We fix our gaze on the things that we cannot see. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. What is faith? If I'm going to be a person that focuses on faith, I've got to understand that nothing is more important than holding on to that faith. If I go to Hebrews 11, faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. Okay, Faith is about something, I have confidence in something that I can't see. Okay, so you and I have troubles. What can we see? We see in front of us troubles. But faith is that if I speak Jesus, I can overcome. I can handle. God's grace is sufficient for me. So if I look at this and I start recognizing for the things we see now will soon be gone. That problem that you face, it will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. Okay, so now I have to develop my faith so that when the things I'm looking at do not overwhelm what I believe. Well, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That's Romans 10 verse 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the good news about Christ. Hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. If you are challenged and you're looking at something here in front of you, and you don't know what you are going to do. This thing is weighing me down. I feel burdened by this. I now listen to the Word of God. The Word of God says that that thing will soon be gone. Am I going to believe what I cannot see? I'm going to believe what God is doing. I'm going to keep my eyes focused on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of my faith, and he says, and what he says is real. So why are we going to stay focused on this thing which we can see, but God is saying, God is saying to us, Romans 8 verse 37, no, despite all these things, overwhelming victory, I like it from the New Living Translation, it says, overwhelming victory. Okay, so I can see this thing, 
It's in front of me. I don't know what to do. I've got this problem. I've got this. I have depression. I've got whatever it is. It's a thing. But by faith, God is saying to me, hey, my word is real. My word is true. My word says that no, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is mine. John 16, verse 33. This is Jesus speaking. What does Jesus say to me? He says, these things I spoke to you that in me, in relationship, he is the vine, I am the branches. Apart from him, I can do nothing. If I am connected to the vine, I am getting sustenance. This that I am getting that is feeding me is of Jesus and not of this world. If I am apart from the vine, the sustenance I am drawing from is from the things of the world. God is saying to me that in me, in him, that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. You will have problems. You will have challenges. You will have things that you have to fight. But be of good cheer. <laughs> be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. Are you of good cheer this morning? You see, depression doesn't have a place here because God has said that thing that you're depressed about, you will overcome it because you're more than an overcomer. And don't worry about that thing because this thing, it shall pass, but he will never pass. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And when I hold on to him, I will be of good cheer and I will overcome this thing. Even if it doesn't feel like it. I am hard pressed from every side. But I'm not depressed. I'm hard pressed. But I stand on the promises of God. And God's word says... But I'm seeing this nonsense in front of me. But God's word says, I don't know how, but God's word says, I must have faith in what God's word says. My faith will grow if I listen to what God's word says. If I don't listen, then I'm listening to the world. You're either wise or you are unwise. Doff. When you're wise, you are listening to what God's word says. When you are doff, you are listening to what the world says. You are unwise. I have overcome the world. That's my Lord. And when I'm in Him, He fights the battle for me. When I'm in Him, He's my provider. He's the one. So I want, to, I want to come back to Psalm 23. I want to touch on that this morning and just give you something to look at. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Who of you can say the Lord is my shepherd? Now you must remember liars go to hell, eh? You see, if you say the Lord is your shepherd and you're doing your own thing, then you that lamiki that's over there, you the lamb that's run away, God leaves these ones, he comes and fetches you, and he breaks your leg. And he carries you. So that he can set the leg correctly, so that you walk correctly on the path that he is leading you on. When you are set correctly, you are set on the path that God wants us to be on. We must walk in step with Him, with the leading of the Holy Spirit. He lets me, sorry, the Lord is my shepherd, I have all that I need. Yeah, but I don't have all that I want. You see, I want, there is a disease that has come into the church and it's called a wantocytis. And a wantocytis is something that is fueled 
by the spirit of the world. And I want to cite this is something that I want because you've got it, and I'm not content with what I've got, so I, I know what I've got is what I need, but I want to cite this says that that which I need is not enough. I need to want something more. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. I want you to understand about the peaceful strength. You see, sheep are funny things. They do whatever they want to do. Does, does it sound familiar? They do what they want if they don't have the proper leading. So this sheep is now thirsty. And the sheep sees this river. But man, this river is flowing. And the sheep is thirsty. He doesn't look at the fact that it's flowing. He looks at the fact that he wants water. I want. And he goes and he puts his head in there. And normally he puts his front. He goes and drinks water. Now what happens to a sheep that's got wool and all of this in a fast flowing river? When he gets in there, all of a sudden, have you, have you taken a woolen jersey and put it in water? And then you pick it, suddenly you can hardly pick this thing up. It's like that wool suddenly becomes like a parachute. That's why you, a sheep must be behind, beside still waters. Because if it's not by still waters, it's by drowning waters. And that's why we lose sheep, because sheep want something, and they go and stick their head where they shouldn't stick it, and it's gone. Back. Dof. So that is why the Holy Spirit leads you on the path of righteousness. Jesus is my shepherd. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. I'm tired. Go and focus on Jesus. Spend a time of worship. Spend a time of prayer. And watch when you stand up how reinvigorated you are. No matter how tired you feel, when you are there with Him, He renews my strength. He guides me along the right paths. He brings honor to His name. Bringing honor to His name. When I live holy, it brings honor to God. When I am walking on the right path, it brings honor to Him. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. How many of you are in dark valleys at the moment? You are battling with stuff. You are in the middle of a thing. You are in a dark valley. It doesn't matter because He leads you through the dark valley. I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. Even the evil demonic are stopped in their tracks. We don't even know what the Lord is dealing with and saving us from as we walk and moan about our stuff in front of us. We are moaning and God is saving us. He's protecting us. He's sending ministering angels to be encamped around us that the demon attacks that are there for us, they're not getting through. But when we focus on everything else, then we minimize the fact that God is protecting us. And we walk out of His protection because we we're losing relationship with God. This is where His protection is. This in relationship, this is where God's taking care of me. This is where I'm dealing with my stuff little by little. This is where I have victory. But over here, when I'm focused on a want to cite this and everything else, I'm putting my head where I shouldn't be putting my head, then I miss out on what God has in store for me. I miss out on His presence. Now, verse 5. I want you to, yeah, just verse 5. I want you to put verse 5 up there. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. 
you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil and my cup overflows with blessing. God, I don't want you to prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Lord, I want you to prepare a table for me on my vacation. I want you to prepare a table for me there in the Maldives. I want you to prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. In the presence of everything that is fighting you, that is battling against you. We do not fight against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. In the presence of my enemies, my Lord prepares a feast. Do you believe that? You see, the only way you can believe that is if you have faith. If you don't have faith, you can't believe this. Because when I look at my circumstances, I don't believe that I have a feast. You see, a table is somewhere where you come and sit down and the people that are with you are people that think like you think, that worship like you worship. You come together at the table of the Lord. He's prepared a table for me in the presence of my enemies. He hung on the cross and he defeated Satan. He laid him to open shame. I have a table in front of me that has been prepared by him. Don't go away from that. Stay there. He is the one that once he's done that, the table is prepared. If I partake at his table, he anoints my head with oil and my cup runs over. If I don't partake at the table, why don't I partake at the table? I don't partake at the table because my problems are bigger than seeing the table. You see, I'm so focused on the things that are wrong and the things are not okay that I'm not looking at the author and the finisher of my faith. I'm not looking at him. I am not looking at my circumstances through the eyes of Jesus. I'm not looking at my circumstances through the promises of God's word. I have to look at my circumstance. I am coming to the table of the Lord. He has prepared a feast. A feast of all the promises of God are laid at the table. When I come to the table of the Lord, every promise is yes and amen in Jesus Christ. He lays the table before me. I come and I partake. What do we do? We come to the table. And there was a, a sermon that was preached by Louis Giglio. And it is called, Be careful who you invite to the table. And when I listened to the sermon, it was such an amazing thing. We come to the table and we look at the... Okay, this is my twist on it. Okay, so I come to the table. All God's promises are yes and amen in Jesus Christ. He went to the cross. He did the work. Satan is defeated. Here is the celebration. As often as you come together, do this in remembrance of the victory that he has done. I come to the table that has been prepared for me. As I come to the table, my focus goes off of the table. I'm not looking at the table. I'm not looking at what God has promised me as victory. I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at the fact that things are not okay in my life. I'm so focused on the things that are not okay that suddenly somebody else comes and sits on the table here. An uninvited guest comes and sits here and says, Do you mind? Is it okay that I sit here? And you're so focused on your nonsense. You're not sit, it's fine. And you're busy with... This is not right. That's not right. I feel like this. I think. The person says to you, yeah, those things are terrible. Yeah, it's not lacquer. None of these promises, yeah, can fulfill that gap. 
You know what? I know somebody, and they've got a crystal that can help you. I know somebody who's got a mix, that when you take this mix, you are going to be happy. I, and this person, an uninvited guest, comes to the table with promises that the world is offering you, and you are not looking at the promises that are there for you, that are given to you by God Himself. And because I had let my faith slide, I am so worried about I that I want to be happy. If you want to be happy, get a puppy. If you want the joy of the Lord, face your circumstances with your eyes on Jesus, holding on to His promises. And you will have an overwhelming victory. Because greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. I shall not want. I am led. Are you led? I am led. I am restored, I am kept, I am protected, I am guided, I am directed, I am His, and He is mine. And these I am's that I'm saying here are all I am's that come out of God's Word, and it's not an I am that I can do it, because apart from Him I am, Nothing. I can only claim God's promises when I am in relationship with the great I am. And again, I've got to ask you the question, who do you say he is? Who do you say he is? This is his promise for me. His promise for me at the table is provision. Give me verse 6. I've come to the table, he's anointed me, my cup runs over, and now, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Why? Because I came to the table. I came and I partook of what God called me to partake of. Mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I've got to get to dwell in the house of the Lord. But if I'm not dwelling in the presence of God, I will not dwell in the house of the Lord. Guys, we've got a decision that you and I have to make. Next week, I'll pick up on the thing that is hindering us from walking the way we should. The sin of unforgiveness. I'm going to be sharing with you about that. But right now, I've got to ask you the question. Is this true for you? Is this real for you? And if it's not, I want to invite you to come to the table that He has prepared for you in the presence of your enemies. Amongst all your garbage, there is a table that pushes back the garbage and pushes everything out the way. You've just got to come to that table. At that table, I am more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ. At that table, I have all the mercy I need. At that table, my, the mercies of God are new every morning. At that table, no matter how much trouble I've got, in the morning, I have His peace. In the morning, I have a new day. In the morning, the joy of the Lord is my strength. In the morning, my morning has turned to laughter, to rejoicing. But you've got to make the choice. There is no more one foot in, one foot out. The only way I can say this, and I say this to each and every one of you, you cannot be half pregnant. You either are or you aren't. You cannot be a half Christian. You either are or you're not. Let's make it clearer. You cannot be a child of God and partake in the things of darkness. Because light 
has nothing to do with darkness. On the contrary, darkness is the absence of light. And you carry the light. You are light bearers. When you walk and you want to partake in darkness, you have to cover your light. You have to say, I restrict my light so that I can partake in the things of the world. You see, you kill your light yourself. God is calling you to the table. God is calling you so that He can anoint you, that He can strengthen you, that He can say to you, surely goodness and mercy is with you all the days of your life, and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father God, I've got to stop making excuses. I've got to stop finding a reason. What is the reason that I'm finding not to have a proper relationship with you? No. That is no more. Today, I will not harden my heart today. Surely, goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. That can only happen if I'm pursuing God. If I seek Him with my whole heart while He can still be found. Lord, I need you. These things I have spoken to you, says Jesus, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. You're going to have trouble. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Father, I want to let go of all the things that I want. And I want to come to the table of the Lord where you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. Whatever has been thrown at me, whatever has been shot at me, whatever fiery darts, Whatever strategies the devil has used to cause pain in my life, to cause problems, to cause me to have this boulder in front of me, this mountain that is stopping my progress, I speak to that mountain in the name of Jesus. And if I have enough faith, the faith the size of a mustard seed, when I speak to this mountain, it will be removed. I can enjoy every promise that God has given me at the table of the Lord. I can feast at the table of the Lord. All I have to do is come and be seated. Stop doing what I'm doing. Stop trying to find a way where I, I must come and be seated so that from the table, the Lord will lead me on the path of righteousness. The Lord will lead me in victory. The Lord will lead me to everlasting life. The Lord himself has bought the victory with the blood of Jesus Christ. What more do you want? The world cannot offer you this. Choose this day whom you will serve. And if it is the world, then so do it. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This morning, I want to ask you, you are my house. I am standing in the gap for us. I'm asking you, are you serving the Lord? Or are there idols in your life? Is there something more important than your relationship with God? Are you making excuses? 
If you want Jesus in your life, if you want more of Him, I just want you to raise your hand and put it down. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're going to pray this together. Lord, I need you. I'm stopping the excuses. This thing that I have, I lay it at your feet. You, your grace is sufficient for me. Lord, you are more than enough. I will let go. I am letting go. I have let go. It is you, Lord. I need you. Lead me on the path of righteousness. Lead me to that table that you have prepared in the presence of my enemies. I look forward. I want the anointing on my head with oil. I want my cup to overflow with blessing. Surely your goodness and your unfailing love will follow me all the days of my life. Father, as you've heard every person that has uttered these words, you know every person's heart. You know whether we're playing games or whether we're not. You know if we're serious or if we're not. You know our coming and our going, our standing and our sitting. Lord, you know everything. And Lord Jesus, I pray that you will take the lordship of our lives. Holy Spirit, come and empower us by your grace and your mercy. Lord, you give us everything we need for life. Thank you, Jesus, that you make a way for each and every one of us. In Jesus' name I pray. And we all said, Amen.